welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be discussing shooting film while using strobes inside of the studio. I used to think that shooting film using artificial light was just this long drawn out process that was overly complicated. But when I actually went inside of the studio and applied specific methods to this that I'm used to using, it wasn't really that hard at all. So in today's video, we're gonna be discussing quite a few things, the settings that I use, my lighting scenarios, uh, and a bunch of other just small tips and tricks that you can use when you're deciding that you wanna shoot film using strobes. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video and uh, go over some of the fun stuff. Like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I'm gonna really be using black and white film for a lot of my shoots this year, uh, really putting a preference on black and white film because I really love the look of it, especially the film that we're going to be using today, which is the BW XX film from Cine Steel. I love Cine Steel BWXX for a plethora of reasons. You get that nice old school cinematic Hollywood look to your images. You get that high contrast. You know, there's nice tonal range within your images. Um, I think overall, this is my favorite black and white film stock so far since shooting uh, since April of 2022. And it wouldn't be a video without me deciding to shoot film using this stock. Couple things I want to note right off the back, I was shooting with the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 and the Mamiya 110mm f2.8 lens for that camera, as well as the BWXX film is in 120, of course, for medium format. So in this particular studio, Northern Light Studio that I use here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, they have a bunch of Profoto lights, so I just went and grabbed the Profoto trigger and attached it to the small little side uh, hot shoe mount on the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2. Um, also be mindful, depending on the type of camera that you have, you might need like some sort of extender for the uh, hot shoe mount. So you have your trigger, you have your strobes all ready and fired up. You wanna make sure that you're on the proper channels, all that other fun stuff. So once we get through some of that, right, the next part is your settings. And that's the important portion that I really was super confused on when I decided to uh, start shooting film and wondered if I ever wanted to use strobes with any of my work. So the biggest thing, and I use most of the time, I meter with a digital camera because one, I'm not buying a $200 light meter. And two, I have years of digital experience uh, that I just carry over into film uh, without even most of the time metering with a digital camera just because you're used to shooting in specific scenarios so you kind of know what lighting works when and where so when shooting with a digital camera there's a couple things that I use specifically when I meter right um, and in this scenario for strobes I usually set my shutter speed at 1 over 250th of a second because that's the highest that my Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 can go up to so that's a dead lock-in right there so 1 over 250th of a second for my app Aperture. Now it definitely depends on the type of look that I want for the images right within the studio But nine times out of ten I'm leaning more on the upper range So I mean from like 8 to 11 somewhere within that for aperture when in studio is definitely okay to shoot with a higher aperture Okay, everything doesn't need to be blurred out at f1.4 or at f2 f2.8 right um, The higher the aperture that you use and when you're shooting in studio the sharper your images are going to be so again Let's um, you know what the kids say normalize using higher apertures when you're shooting studio work because they just look so much better. So I have my shutter speed locked in, I have my aperture locked in. The last thing is the ISO. So on film, of course, it's a specific box speed ISO that you're asked to shoot with. In this case, I'm using Cine Seal BWXX and I can go with 200 or I can go with 250. 
right? Because it's a variable ISO film. So you can shoot these the, this film at two different ISOs for different results. So when I put my ISO metering in for the digital camera, what I always do, I always half of whatever ISO that I'm shooting at. So because I'm shooting with 200 ISO on the BWXX film, I'm going to put in 100 ISO on my digital camera. So the reason why I always half the ISO for my digital camera before I actually put the real settings on my film camera is so I can get a denser negative. Now I do not claim to be the YouTube gospel for film photography. So some things that work for me, like I mentioned, having my ISO when I'm putting my digital metering into my digital camera, it may not work for you, right? But some results that I've received using this method, it definitely have worked for me. Um, my images came out looking exactly how I thought they would. So again, uh, it's all up to preference or your experience when shooting and using various uh, lighting scenarios, especially like metering with cameras. A lot of folks on the internet use light meters and that is totally fine. That's the preferred method, I believe, uh, for a lot of film photography. But personally, from um, my experience using digital cameras throughout all these years and just learning how to read light and the different uh, settings, especially with strobes, um, personally, I don't think I need one. Um, but I, I, again, I achieved the results that I was looking for for the images on film here. Absolutely enjoyed the results from this session here. Uh, like I said, Cine Steel BWXS delivers that awesome contrasty, like punchy black look to your photos. And I think that's a gorgeous, like just alternative um, to some of the other black and white uh, film stocks that we see. I also love that no matter that the fact that this is a 200 or 250 ISO film, that you still get that beautiful beautiful like baked in grain uh, that gives you that cinematic like old school look in your images and that's why I honestly adore um, Cine Steel BWXX for photos and that's again like I mentioned that's my favorite black and white film stock as of right now. You guys let me know in the comments what you thought of my method of metering with a digital camera you know maybe it might be a little bit controversial but it's 2023 you know everybody does things differently so if you have a different method that works for you drop that below in the comments I'd love to hear from you to see what other options as I can explore as I continue this film journey. Thank you all for watching. I definitely appreciate you. Go ahead and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, as well as click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content similar to this. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers this year. So let's go ahead and just, just devour that like button. Yeah, devour, devour is a nice word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go ahead and devour that like button, smash the like button, uh, beat up the like button, whatever you wanna say. Just click that like button uh, and we go ahead and get this stuff pushed through the algorithm this year. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.